I certainly thought the Mets needed more than two starters. And it seems like the Mets feel that way as well and are still very much in on Kodai Senga. Where do they stand right now with him? That's exactly how I put it, Steve. Very much in. They're not the only team in on him. They're one of the strongest teams in on him. Uh, they look at it uh, essentially like uh, Quintana replaced Walker. So if they're going to replace Chris Bassett, it would be with Kodai Senga. Now, I actually think uh, that Bassett's still a possibility for them instead of Senga. Uh, they're not necessarily. And there are concerns about Senga, too, regarding their, there are teams that think because he has two elite pitches but not a full repertoire that he might actually be a bullpen guy. I know that Jim disagrees with that. There's plenty of uh, organizations that disagree with that. But with Bassett, you know what you're getting. He's a starting pitcher and a very solid mid to top rotation one. Senga's got a high ceiling, but a lot of variance maybe between the ceiling and the floor because he hasn't pitched uh, in this league. Uh, but at any rate, the Mets do their evaluation and scouting and meeting with him, which was positive, uh, very much in on this player and feel that they have room for him in the budget even after the other pitching moves they've made. I mean, the good news is, if you got either one of these two guys, that rotation is going to really settle in nicely. Now, you know, Bassett, you know, we saw a lot of him, and he's, you know, we know he's got uh, pitch to contact. He's got the command. He's got the six different pitches on, on occasion, and so he can trick you that way and strike guys out, and he gives you length. You know, if you look at Senga, I feel like he's a guy who oh, his stuff is clearly better when you grade it out and when you get the the radar gun. He's got the split finger. I mentioned this morning Kevin Gosman is a is a comp if you yeah. really like him. You know, and if they, you know, you, Jeremy Hefner or in the pitching guys, they give him a little di a different grip on the breaking ball, whether it's a cutter or a slider. They're like, well, sign me up for something like that. When you have two swing and miss type pitches, the command's a little off. And I think that's where teams get scared for, by him. But uh, this guy has tremendous upside throwing 98, 99, sometimes even 100 miles an hour. Uh, look, I'm glad to hear Andy say and report, because I trust everything Andy oh, reports, you, that the Mets are still on on Bassett, because I still think he may be a better fit for this team. They know what they're going to get out of him. I think with a guy like Singa, there's going to be a lot of guys bidding on him because of that 98-mile-an-hour fastball. But a two-pitch guy in this league, there's going to be some adjustments. I think he's got that very sort of standard um, over-the-top fastball splitter, and he's going to maybe be a guy that could go to the bullpen. So I, I still like Bassett, and I think Bassett's going to be more affordable uh, in in a sense for the for the Mets as well. So um, I think either one of these would be great choices. And but I do like Bassett still, and I'm glad he's still in the mix. I will say this: the Mets acknowledge, and I think everybody in the, in the industry would acknowledge that there's an unknown with Sanga. But yeah. you know, he's one of those guys that that has that tantalizing stuff that the industry loves. And I think that the signing of Quintana at least gives the Mets a little more of a stomach to maybe go after a gamble because Quintana does. If it was just Verlander and Sanga. I think they'd be a little more uneasy about it, but Verlander, Quintana, and then you throw in the high upside guy in Sanga, I think that, that they're at least more open to that than they would have yeah. been if they didn't have Quintana in the mix.